for our second lecture of this week, where we're looking at apostles in which there's moderate evidence for their martyrdoms. We're gonna take a look at John. Now, in my research, perhaps what surprised me most was that, that there are some leading evangelical scholars who believe John died as a martyr. I just assume he died a natural death, and I found this evidence very interesting, so we're gonna take a look at it. But before we go any further, keep a couple things in mind. One tradition argues that John went to Patmos later in his life and then died as a martyr. That is very conjectural, and I think just largely based upon speculation. Now, let me frame this issue, because when we talk about John, there's a lot of historical pieces to make sense of this. The traditional view is that John wrote all five books attributed to him, the Gospel, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. The traditional view is also that John, one of the 12, the son of Zebedee, was the beloved disciple as described in the Gospel of John. But there is some debate about this. Now, for example, amongst Irenaeus and Papias, second century church fathers, and into Eusebius, a fourth century church father, about whether or not there's one John, meaning this same apostle is the one who wrote all the books, or there's at least a second figure named John the Elder. So some would say that there's John the Apostle, and then there's this additional figure, John the Elder, who wrote, say, Revelation or some of the other books. And there's huge debate about this. Now, of course, some would say, wait a minute, how could John have been a martyr and also the author of the fourth gospel? Well, the answer is found in what's called this Johannine school. And if you look in John 21, 24, it says, this is a disciple who's bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. In other words, at the very end of John, you have this we saying, we know his testimony is true. It's not written by John, but John had passed away, passed on some of the traditions, and now this group, this Johannine school, is writing this text. Now, I think Richard Bauckham is right when he says, the way he puts it is it's kind of a we of authority, not a numerical we. In other words, at the end of John, the writer is saying, look, we, you and I know now that these sayings are true. So I tend to think that uh, there wasn't really this Johannine school and it was written by the Apostle John and that Richard Bauckham got this point correct. Now, with some of that background in mind, why would people think that John actually died as a martyr? Well, there's some biblical evidence that's given. Biblical evidence is found in Mark 10, 35 through 40. And you know this story, but here's what it says. And James and John, the son of Zebedee, came up to him, Jesus, and said to him, Teacher, we want you for you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want for me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit at your right hand, one to your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said, We are. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but is for those who have been prepared. Now, the way this is often interpreted is, wait a minute, what did it mean to drink the cup? What did it mean to be baptized? And traditionally, if you think about it, to drink the cup probably meant to die the way Jesus was going to die. Now we see that with James in Acts 12 too. So what about John? He must have died to have, quote, drank the cup and been baptized in the way Jesus describes. I don't think this is insuperable. I think to drink the cup could in fact be to suffer on behalf of my name, the cost that it means to follow me, pick up your cross. But this is a very interesting biblical account that would seem to indicate Jesus expected John to be, to die the death of a martyr. Now, if you've followed some of these stories, you know there's stories of, by Tertullian, of John being thrown in boiling oil but not dying, drinking poison and not dying. It could be, I can't prove this, that some of the church historians reflecting upon this passage in Mark chapter 10 have Jesus saying, can you drink the cup? We're familiar that John died naturally and put him through the act of martyrdom, but just don't not actually dine. Can't prove it, but that's possible. So that's the first piece of biblical evidence. 
The second one is that John disappears in the book of Acts. If you read the first few chapters of Acts, John is all over the place. He's traveling with Peter. He's performing miracles. And then all of a sudden, he disappears from the book. And he doesn't show up in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council. Why not? The answer is because he was put to death at the same time as his brother, James. Now, I find this interesting, not very compelling, because there's a lot of figures in the book of Acts who show up and then disappear once their story is not germane to the advance of the gospel, which goes from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. So like Mark chapter 10, I think this is interesting, but I'm not sure I'm convinced this is enough biblically to assume that he died as a martyr. Now, there's also some extra biblical evidence given for the supposed martyr martyrdom of John. One is a quote by Philip of Sidae in his church history. Philip of Sidae in his church history, he wrote in the 5th century. Now, what Philip of Sidae does is he quotes Papias, who is an early 2nd century church father, that lists James and John dying together as martyrs. Now, if Papias, in the early 2nd century, listed James and John dying together as martyrs, this would be an early powerful piece of evidence within the living memory that in fact this is how John died. But uh, Philip of Sidae wrote after Eusebius' church history. Eusebius also quotes Papias and doesn't include that segment about James and John dying that Philip of Sidae does. Thus, most scholars that I've been able to talk to who specialize in, say, Eusebius and Papias would say this almost certainly was not in the original statement by Papias and was invented or accidentally added for some reason in Philip of Sidae later. So again, we have kind of an interesting hint, but not quite strong enough to make the case Ceiling. Philip of Sidae says, Papias says in his second book that John the theologian and James' brother were killed by Jews. The other piece of external evidence we looked at is Afra Hot from the 4th century. We explored this a few videos ago where it describes James and John following in the footsteps of Jesus. But then again, and you see with Afra Hot right here towards the end of it, and James and John walked in the footsteps of their master Christ also of the apostles hereafter in diverse places, confessed and provided true martyrs. Now, what does it actually mean that they followed in the footsteps of their Christ? Does that mean their death and crucifixion or their martyrdom? Well, maybe. It could just mean proclamation and suffering and a willingness to do so. This is also geographically and chronologically separate quite a bit. Third, you have church calendars kind of showing up in the fifth century where James and John are put together as martyrs. And then last, in the ninth century, there's a quote by somebody called George the Sinner. Again, this is the ninth century. He says, at that time, he, the apostle John, was the sole survival of the 12 disciples. And after writing the gospel that bears his name was honored with martyrdom. For Papias, the bishop of Hierapolis, who had seen him with his own eyes, claimed in the second book of the sayings of the Lord that John was killed by Jews, thus clearly fulfilling, together with his brother, Christ's prophecy concerning them about their own confession and agreement about this. So he's referring to the same quote that Philip of Sidae did in the 5th century. Now look, this is written in the 9th century. We don't know his source. We don't have earlier attestation that this is in fact how James and John died. So to me, I'm not convinced by this. It's possible he died as a martyr. Some would say even more probable, but I think probably the best explanation is that he really did die a natural death.